right, we should be live. Let's see. I see us. Yay. Um, welcome, everybody. We are locating lust in our dreams. Um, we are going to try to keep this short tonight. Um, and also, we're like epic long Facebook people, so mm -hmm. we're going to try to keep it short. Um, because we're going to dive into this a little bit more at the, the event that we're having. So we're going to talk just briefly, I think, maybe about the three package, three, three event package that we've got going on that has a dream circle in that. But let's get into locating lust in our dreams. Perfect. Um, so where do you want to start? Like, what do you think some, we were doing, this was kind of fun the other day, we were doing a little brainstorm of like, how might lust show up in your dreams? What symbols might be in your dreams that might indicate um, desire, lust, yearning, hunger, thirst, life force, creativity, sort of all those things that we're working with. Um, so you want to just like do that again, do a little back and yeah. forth. And then I was thinking we could talk a little bit about waking dreams and how like our auras and our chakras contain symbols like our nighttime dreams do and um, maybe like do a little spot reading. Let, let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes. All right. So I, I think for me, one of the places that less shows up is, is in symbols that mean something to me that mean less full or desireful um, emotions and felt sense. And so, and there's different categories, right? I think we started talking about this the other day. Like I know the, the theme of water in my um, dreams is really prevalent. I have a lot of water dreams and it, really signifies to me the lustful nature of my my spiritual path like um being overwhelmed by water often shows up in this way that i feel overwhelmed with my lust to mm -hmm. to connect with the divine yeah, yeah yeah i'm feeling that too um i think for me um my lust has a tendency to show up um, as snakes for sure. That's actually yeah. one of the first ways that it showed up for me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's um, sometimes it's cool. We're copacetic, like I'm totally cool with the snake in the dream. And sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm afraid, or sometimes the snake bites me and I'm taken aback, or you know, like how dare you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so for me sometimes, uh, and, and I actually don't have a whole lot of uh, dreams with animals in it. So now I'm kind of even sitting with like, well, maybe there are different variants of the way lust might show up for me in this very primal animal way. So yeah. maybe even, um, you know, what would it, what would my experience of the dream with the bear that was chasing me? Um, how if I were looking at it with this lens of lust bears are pretty lustful animals yeah. too right like they're always portrayed with their hands in the honey pot or the hive or um yeah, yeah or like t terrorizing people with their their need their lust for flesh um the way yeah to prepare for hibernation their lust is actually full approval because they need to, to bulk up <laughs> <laughs> to go yeah. to sleep for so long during the winter which yeah. i i love so much about that right like i'm gonna bulk up so i can go to sleep that's like <laughs> my dream right right that's what i do right. you know. <laughs> yeah um less for me is also you know i've as we've open the container and been working with the frequency I've really been sitting with what is less like what is the felt sense of less what is this thing in my body that I feel when I am lustful and I do have that feeling in my dreams a lot so like it doesn't always just show up as a symbol 
in my, I have very vivid dreams, as you know, um, and I have a lot of feelings. I have a lot of physical sensations in my dreams. So I have a lot of um, erotic embodiment dreams where, um, <laughs> and I, and gosh, so Julie and I um, we have worked, both worked with Toko Pa, who's a, who's a dream worker. Um, and really, I mean, I attribute my, my start in this, in this realm to her. Um, and I remember one dream that I had that I, it was the first time I came publicly with a dream and we were in a Facebook group. This was what, like 10 years ago, Julie, a, a while ago. Yeah. And she, it was like this new thing to have a Facebook group and to like go in there and she would you would write out your dream, put it in the Facebook group, and then she would ask you questions, much like how Julie um, works with dreams. Um, and I remember posting this dream and she was asking me these questions and it was this dream about a coin purse that looked like- This dream? Yeah, yeah. that looked like um, a, a pussy. And um how, like I remember sharing that dream and being asked the questions in front of everybody just in this Facebook group it wasn't even alive it was just like chatting through the comments yep and feeling my heart thumping and feeling afraid for being for being outed as so lusty because it was as I was typing out what the dream was I was like oh my gosh <laughs> I could see really what was happening for me in that dream and um what was with the medicine being presented and I just wow I remember how full of sensation that whole experience was so uh coin purse is a symbol too um money is very much a lust symbol for me and I often don't dream of like dollar bill money I'll dream of like gold coins a lot well, that's interesting. I just recently started dreaming of dollar bill money. And that actually was the first time I ever dreamed about money, like as a recognizable, this is money. Yeah. Sort of symbol. Um, yeah, that's interesting. And it was in a cash register. It was in a cash register. It was in a cash register that was also like a boom box, like a jam box. It was, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, I, I want to touch on the what you were talking about with this felt sense, because I remember a dream that I had actually where I was talking about taboo dreams, right, where I'm in bed with my cousin and we are being into we're having sex and I'm in the dream. I'm so turned on and thank God this is in a Facebook group. Um, I always had a crush on my cousin. Growing up, I always had a crush on my cousin. Um, I just I mean, thought- you do live um, in Texas. <laughs> well, he doesn't, but anyway. Yeah, I just thought he hung the moon. I thought he hung the moon. Yeah. Um, and, and looking back on that, like in retrospect, like I think he probably had a crush on me too. Sure. So I do, I want to talk a little bit about this too, finish, but um, the, the felt sense of desire is often um, signaled with the, the mir mirror neurons and mm -hmm. desire, lust is a more concentrated version of desire in our bodies. Right, right. So if, if you are feeling lust towards a person, chances are they are feeling some heavily saturated felt sense towards you too. They may not be aware of it. They may not be cognizant of it, but those crushes that we have generally are reciprocated in some way on the other side. So I will say that lust and disgust are very close together from a felt sense perspective. So- Oh, I have know. to tell you this other yeah. dream. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, we yeah. the first dream. So right. yeah, cause there's disgust all in the second dream, but in yeah, the first yeah. dream, um, in the first dream, right? Like I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm having sex with my cousin where it's amazing. It's wonderful. I feel amazing and wonderful. I wake up from the dream, of course, and immediately shame. Yeah. And oh my God, how could I have dreamed that? What if someone finds out that I dreamed that? What does yeah. that mean about me? And um, it was almost like the turn on got completely erased. Yeah. So this is how shame and lust override each other. Because again, shame 
disgust, lust. These are heavily saturated. This is new vocabulary that I'm coming up around this stuff. They're heavily saturated felt senses. And what I mean by that is it's not just one element when you go beneath the story or the emotion. There, there are three gateways into felt sense. The thoughts and beliefs, of course, the physical sensations, and then our emotions and feelings. And so when you go beneath all of those and get to the felt sense, shame, disgust, and lust have very similar felt sense aspects to them for most people. So like disgust and lust and shame, a lot of the trauma response that you default to will come up with all three of those felt senses. So it's it's really through this cultivation of practice that we're advocating here that you are able to determine for yourself what lust really feels like in your body. Right, right. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I'm hearing from you as it pertains to dreams, and we're going to talk about sleeping dreams, we're going to talk about waking dreams in a minute, yeah. is if you have a dream where you notice, and that's, that's the first thing that I ask anybody that does dream work with me, how did you feel in the dream? Yeah. So if you notice that you feel, because, right, like, that's easy. I've got a lusty dream where I'm having sex on the beach with Ryan Gosling. That's easy. That's easy to locate. You don't need my help locating your lust with that, right? Um, but if you're, ha what I'm hearing you say is, like, if you have a dream where you felt, where you feel disgust, that that is worth it to ask yourself, where is lust located in here that's coming out sideways, that's being yeah. shamed? or that's being conditioned that that's yeah. not right yeah yeah absolutely okay let me tell you this dream because this is so gross <laughs> okay so so gross i'm gonna have so many sensations telling you this dream okay so in the dream i go to these apartments and um the apartments are stacked on top of each other, sort of like maybe what you would see, how you would see shipping containers stacked on top of each other and made into some kind of housing. But the front is completely open. So you can see into these, all of these apartments and there's no like building. So you, they're just like these shipping container kind of things. And there's an apartment here, two apartments here and there's two apartments here. And I go to these apartments because I'm like a landlord or I'm going to check on something, something like that. And I climb up the ladder to the second story apartment. And when I get to the landing, the landing is just this very thin strip that barely has any room for me to stand on. And of course there's no wall to the apartment. I can just see in, I can see everything that's going on. And the landing is padded too. And as I stand on there and it's really hard to get my balance, um, there's like trash everywhere and like cigarette butts on the landing. And I'm just like disgusted. And I'm looking in at this guy and I'm like disgusted with him. And I'm not really sure what happens next, but I remember the next part that I remember is that I'm having sex with him. And I'm a little confused. <laughs> Um, but I seem to be enjoying myself. Um, and I'm, and, and then I'm, so I'm sort of like, well, wait a second, what's going on here? And I'm thinking like, I'm thinking I'm writing him. I'm, I'm on top and I'm writing him. And then I'm like, no, that's not what's happening. And I look down and I have a cock and I'm fucking him. And I'm like, okay, I'm all right. Like, yeah, this, I'm, yeah, this is fine. This is good with me. And then I pull my cock out and all this poop comes out <laughs> like like soft serve ice cream <laughs> i'm not even to the worst part <laughs> and then he goes and i'm already disgusted right like dude you know we're out alive right like this isn't just you and i having okay i know i know choice. i know but i i like to tell these kinds of dreams because i know that we have these kinds of yes dreams yes and i know it can be really healing to tell the taboo dreams. Yes. So anyway, I'm like, dude, <laughs> what the hell? Um, and then he goes, I like to lick it up. And then I woke up. I was like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, that, that took you out of your super conscious state, state into 
normal consciousness. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's a really significant dream, right? Yeah. Like there's yeah. a lot there. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of lust, a lot of disgust, a lot of both in between. Yeah. Um, yeah. Together. I felt a little bit of shame come in there too. Like, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know where you want to go with that dream. I, you know what? I started working on it and I haven't gotten very far because it's still very like, yeah. But, um, I did tell a friend of mine the dream and she was like, wow, there's a lot to unpack there. That's <laughs> then I broke into laughter. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, she also said though, she was like, she's kind of pondering the images and she was like, oh, it's, She's like, it's someone that cleans up their own shit. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> that finds fulfillment in the, the dirty parts of themselves. Mm, well, that resonates with this like messy witch stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and you literally fuck the shit out of them. <laughs> oh. Oh, so for all of you who know me just a little, you know how painful this is for me because I'm about to like do a little bit of gagging because it's just, it's, it's not my cup of, yeah, that's a very potent dream. Full it's not of... my cup of either. I just, <laughs> I, yeah, no, I know, I know. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Neither of our things. Like I'm kinky, but and there, yeah, not... <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it being your thing. If this is your thing. It's just not my thing. But it's interesting because, again, even if I'm feeling a little gaggy, uh, I'll stop and, like, feel into the felt sense behind all of this. And so um, I, I want to give an example of finding the felt sense. So mm -hmm. earlier today, I was, I've been writing a lot about lust and posting a lot and putting things together and I was deep in concentration and cricket, my dog started barking. And I was like, I immediately got very irritated, angry because I was like, oh, there goes my, I, like, I'm not gonna be able to focus. Like, I need to focus. I need to get this done. And I sat there for a minute. I was like, okay, so why am I so angry about this? Like that, the level of anger and frustration about in response to what was happening felt out of alignment. Mm -hmm. And so I sat with the felt sense and I went deeper and deeper and deeper. And then I felt this like constriction in my heart and this fuzziness in, in the front of my head, uh, like fog or dizziness. And I was like, oh, I feel like I'm gonna be lost. Like I'm gonna get lost and not be able to come back. Like yeah. all this stuff that I'm working on is going to just drift away yeah. unless I control it and hold it. And like, so it was this fear of loss this, and this grief of like, how many times has that happened where I've had a really great idea, I've been interrupted. And then I think it just, my belief is it just leaves me and I'm this like lost person without it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think like here, as I'm he hearing your dream and I'm feeling my own felt sense, there's a level of like not wanting to clean up my own shit there and like being almost disgusted by my own mess underneath and, and like how messy lust can be, how messy erotic desire can be how messy creativity and creation can be and that whole idea of like there is a byproduct there is waste that's um created when we create it's part of the creation process here on this earth plane so yeah yeah i think dreams are so interesting and you always say this too for like the practice right the practice of feeling our lust the practice of feeling our shame, the practice of feeling our disgust, and then and then really sinking into it, and 
it's like a attenuated space. It's the it's the liminal space. It's the mirror dimension where we can experiment because our brains think like our brains and body think it's real. They feel like it's real. Our body it's such an, images. Yeah, it's to, it's happening, right? Yeah. So really feeling into that and and knowing that it's a like a safe enough place to really experiment with all of this. You know, as you were talking, Daniela, I was kind of feeling into the disgust, which kind of lives right here. Yeah. Um, for me. And um, and then also I was sort of putting myself back in the dream. So I was feeling the disgust. And, you know, in the dream, as I'm feeling the disgust, I'm also like really enjoying fucking this guy. Yeah. So now I'm feeling, you know, this like urge to like push in my pelvis. And so for so for me, what's coming up is how powerful I feel in my lust. And disgust and disapproval for me are very linked. Yeah. So now I'm getting curious about the way that I disapprove of my lust, the way that I get disgusted by my lust. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because our whole lives. The power, the power. Yeah, that our whole there. lives were told to not, I mean, even, you know, posting about it as much as I have been, um, there's the, the, I don't want to go into it because this is about dreams, but the, the programming that we've all received, you know, that lust only results in pedophilia and rape and incest and violence and object vacation of women like that is that is the patriarchy at work everyone like that is not that's that the not the result of lust that is the <laughs> result of lust that's been shamed and disapproved of and 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 the conditioning that's gone yes. into our uh, our psyches like like a virus so that even women are upholding this this virus yeah. Um, and uh, being responsible, not consciously, but feeling responsible for, uh, you know, not inciting lust because men just can't control themselves. And so I can't be my full lusty self because some harm will come to me because men clearly cannot control themselves. Right. And so that, that takes the responsibility off of, off of them. And you can put, you know, you can put whatever, um, you can put whatever in in those roles right like there was a time at which it was you know black people can't control their lust and so they have to be treated in a particular way and so that informs the way that we um that informs the way that racism gets perpetuated and um and continues to go so it's not necessarily men and women i really see it as like that we we see that this external entity um, cannot control its lust. And so we have to control our lust, kind of going back to the mirror neurons of which you were saying earlier. So that harm does not come to me. Yeah, this, this um, equation of lust with harm, mm -hmm. like ultimate harm, like, like predator level harm, not natural predator, but like villain, predator, awful, disgusting, <laughs> shameful level of harm. And yeah. it's all so twisted and, and combined that this cultivation of being with your villain and being with your lust and determining for yourself what those things are in your body um, is, is really the most freeing thing, the most powerful thing. The world will change if we all did this work. Right, right. Yeah. And watch what I do here. We're going to bring it back to dreams. Sure. Dreams do that for us. So, so they, do that, they do that for us in a number of ways. They can do that for us while we sleep, which is a super wonderful gift. I love it when that happens. When they just rearrange our insides and our psyche for us. Boom, yeah. done. <laughs> Love that. Um, and sometimes uh, it takes a little while and we have to have a living relationship. We have to be engaged with our dreams 
um, in order for that to to happen. So these so all dreams come to us in service. I believe that all dreams come to us in service. So why does what the hell is this dream coming to me in service for? Well, one thing I mean, without having done a ton of dream work on this, one thing is for me to notice the connection between power and disgust and lust in my body where that is. And then if I hang out there for a minute, because I do somatic inquiry, just like you do, um, and embodied dream work, um, if I hang out with those sensations for a minute, I might start to see, oh, that's connected to this story, or that's connected to this story. But one of my favorite questions is, what's going on in waking life that reminds you of this feeling? Yeah, so you want to jump in there? We can do a little waking dream, yeah. sacral read if you're up for it. I've already shared three of my dreams with people today. Why not? Let's just keep going. <laughs> All right. So um, everybody, this is a technique that I have learned through training with my um, colleague and peer, <laughs> Erin the Psychic Witch. And um, I went through several trainings with her. I basically was in her program and in her sphere for about three years, which culminated in this year long program called the psychic training. And it was when I was in Layla's sex, love and relationship training. And so you can imagine that there was a lot moving through my body, had a lot going on. It was wonderful. I would never do it again and I would never not do it. So I'm going to use the technique that I was taught, um, how to read energy. There are two parts of our energy field that we read in this in this type of um, session. You can read the chakra of someone, which is our internal energy, or you can read the corresponding auric field. So we have we have many chakras, but I've learned about thirteen of them. Very very studied them, and then thirteen layers in our um, field that correspond to those chakras. So when you do a reading like this, a psychic reading, it really can be seen and you'll hear me talk about it. It's, it sounds like a dream. It sounds like when I'm reading Julie, the way that I read is very dreamlike. It's very saturated with symbology. There's a lot of colors. I smell things. I hear things. Um, so it will be interesting to, to read her sacral chakra. I'm not going to read the pictures in her aura. I'm going to read actually her energy after we heard that dream. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Go ahead and um, say your name for me, your full name, um, three times. Julie Ann Balderrama. Julie Ann Balderrama. Julie Ann Balderrama. All right. So by saying your name you are giving me consent to read your chakras and your field. And I'll start with just an overall, <laughs> can feel like you're there. <laughs> an overall like tone of where you're at. It's funny, it's trickster day. And so, um, the first thing that came in was you just laughing and like you have these little ears, like little fox ears or coyote ears. And you kind of look, you, you're um, shimmering in and out of being a fox or a coyote and laughing and your laugh sounds human. And then it will go into the animal and then human and then the animal. And you're showing me your big red bushy tail. So you're a fox, you're a red fox. And you're like rubbing the tail all over your face and like you're like rubbing your tail and you're like, ooh, feel my tail. It's so sexy. <laughs> so hot. I got a tail. And you're just, you love, you love all of this. Like you are, you, the lust is high in this picture. Yeah. And then like you just got up and you sa sauntered away and um, I was like, okay, we're going to read your sacral chakra. You're like, yeah, yeah, I know. And like you, you're sauntering away towards the opening to a cave. <laughs> and you want me to sign a guest book. You're saying, 
<laughs> wants me to sign a guest book. Like, yes, I, I've been here. I'm going to go go do this reading. That's very funny. Yeah, you're really playful and curious here. Mm. And so um, we go into the cave, and it's just like right in the beginning of the cave, and, and we're sitting down, and you're still shimmering in and out of... Uh, this fox character and like <laughs> there's this big huge orange on this like stone table and we're sitting on either side and you stand up and you look at me like this and you pull out this big machete and you whack the orange and split it in half <laughs> and it kind of like opens up and like juice flew everywhere I'm gonna go ahead and say your sacral chakra is feeling pretty juicy um yeah, and so the image really zeroed in, like in a movie, <laughs> on the juice, the, the juice, the droplets of orange juice that came out, and like, it's messy all over the table, and then you just, as this fox slash you creature, pick up your half and just start like rubbing it on your face and eating it, and there's juice dripping down everywhere. And I'm just kind of like watching <laughs> and laughing. This is a show. You're putting on kind of a show for me. So what's beneath the show? So when I said that, you immediately sat down and kind of shrunk up. And your little tail is kind of just twitching. And then you pulled out a pair of glasses out of this case and you, you put them on and you look very serious. And you're like, kind of like, you all of a sudden became a, a child version of yourself and the fox. And you're like very studiously like writing down, like, as soon as I said, what's beneath the show, you like started taking notes and looking at me like, well, what should be beneath the, well, like, tell me what should be here. I'll learn, I'll learn. Just tell me what I should write down. So what's here for you? The moment I said that, you took off the glasses, you pulled back out the orange, and you started rubbing it all over your body, and you're all sticky. Oh. And then the small child version fox of you came up and sat next to us, and you're like brushing her face with your tail. And you're like, it's okay, I've got this. Aww. And she's giggling like a little bit. She still feels a little contracted, unsafe, but she's giggling. Yeah. Do you have any questions? How can I play with disgust? So the little girl version of you crawled underneath the table when you said that, when you asked that question. And like you and I both look under there and she's like, no, 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 mm -mm. no, no, no. And she's shivering. She doesn't feel safe at all. And there's a part of you as this adult um, fox you that wants to like bite her ass to get her back out from under the table, like force her out, like pinch her and make her get out. And she's like, no, it doesn't matter what you do. I'm hiding under the table. This is not, this is not the place for me, she keeps saying. And then there's like this relationship that you have here with this little fox girl part of you where you get really vindictive. Like you really want to punish her for make, for taking away your fun. Huh. 
So she just wrote something down underneath the table and the journal and threw it up on the table. And it says, yeah, this is not the place for me. This is not the place for me. So I, that's pretty clear to me. Do you, do you need me to help you with any more of that? No. Um... Yeah, I guess my, my main question is like, okay, well, what, what is the place? I think playing with disgust is not, not for your little, your little girl, right? Like for the right, little, right, right. So like maybe finding a place for her to go play and then coming back to this part of you that, that wants to play with disgust. Yeah. To me, there's this like, somehow this expectation it felt like that the adult Vert Fox version of you had that play is always childlike. Mm. And in this case, the little girl part of you is like, no, this is not the place for me. Like this, this is not childlike innocent play. Like there's <laughs> the disgust is not innocent, right? Like there's, there's a level here that is not safe for me that I don't like. Right. And it reminds me of um, when my daughter was younger, she's a Scorpio, um, and you cannot make her do anything that she does not want to do. Oh, yeah. Um, and which is very different than me, especially as a kid. Um, I was very pliable and compliant. And that's what, like, you immediately started writing down, okay, well, what, what, okay, there's a right. show. Okay, tell me. Like, and so it was like you, to me, the way that if this were my waking dream, the way I would envision this for myself is lust and disgust are very animalistic and very intertwined for you. Um, and there's this, oh, sorry. And there's this little girl part of you who, who's still in the mix right? That doesn't really belong there, but because you want to play, you're trying to like force that little girl part of you to engage mm. and the little girl, because you were so pliable as a child, the mm. little girl's like, yeah, this isn't appropriate. Like, let me go do something else. You, you play with disgust and lust and all that stuff. I'm going to go right color my coloring book. You know? Reminds me um, of moments when my daughter was younger and I had not come to a place where I was um, as, well, I, just, um, I was in a different place. Um, and, you know, like I can't think of a specific example, but moments where she would be around adults and I would want her to behave a certain way, get, you know, like give someone a hug or just be, even speak to someone. Like I never forced her to hug anybody, but even just to speak to somebody. And um, she would have none of it, none of it. And I would feel that like, you're embarrassing me. That like yeah. adult fox. That you know? vindictive part. That's what it was. It was like, yes. yeah. you're taking something away from me here and I'm going to punish you for it. Right. Where right. instead this little girl is just like, this isn't the place for me. Stop trying to bring me into something that right. I don't belong into. Right, right. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Um, Julia's watching and she's like, I don't know what's going on, but the energy feels really <laughs> deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. There was a lot covered. <laughs> there was. <laughs> there was. I, I don't know that we can go back through it, yeah. um, but good thing it's yeah. recorded on a live. Yes, totally, totally. All right. So, well, yeah. So, yeah. you know, with, with, um, with readings like this, with waking dreams, meaning like, you know, those moments in your, in your waking life that feel like a dream, right? Where you sort of like go into this place where you're like, I'm watching all of this stuff happen around me. <laughs> and this happens a lot to me in nature, right? So we live in it's Idaho. It's such a wild place, but I'm always so still like taken aback at all the stuff I see. Mm -hmm. So I regularly, we have a couple, a pair of owls that are kind of our buddies that we go and watch every night. We've got like eagles that are our friend, like we've, we've cultivated relationships with nature in our area with specific nature beings. 
But every once in a while, something interesting will happen. And the other night we were driving home from our hike and we were literally like a mile away from our house. And I look on the side of the road and there's this big, round, prickly, like like probably, I don't know, 70 pounds. It's a big porcupine. I've never seen a porcupine that big. And it was just sitting on the side of the road, like scratching its ear. And we watched it. It got up. It walked up the hill really slow, like just kind of waddled up. And it was, I was like, wow, that's a huge portent. Like that was a waking dream. That was a symbol for me to pay attention to for sure. Totally. Yeah. One must always be careful when hugging a porcupine. <laughs> it's true. That is a line from Harold and the Purple Crayon that I just love. Anyway, um, so the more I do dream work, work with my sleeping dreams, the more I'm able to see these moments like this yeah. as these waking dreams. And of course, yeah. there's waking dreams with the psychic readings and these waking dreams with your journeys and waking dreams with. Um, so anyway, the point being that um, more and more as we come into this space of eminence and of um, playing with these energies that uh, have previously been wanted, uh, groups have wanted to dominate or to tame. Um, we're, we're like not looking, we're not looking to tell you what these things mean, I guess is what no. I'm trying to get to. Yeah. And so we're not gonna put a big bow on the end of this. We're just no. living into these questions. How is lust showing up in your dream, in your sleeping dreams? in your waking dreams and i was telling when we were planning this live i was telling daniela i was like you know the thing about dreams is that they're so multi-layered yeah but you really could take any dream and you could put on the your lenses of where is lust in this dream and i bet you could find the place that it is or disgust or shame right right like, so as, it, as it relates yes yeah. exactly you're going to yeah. travel in threes a lot of time Beautiful. Uh, we are going to have a dream circle where we can come in and we can um, share these together. And you, it, it, it helps to have other eyes on your dreams, I think, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love the exercise if this were my dream. Yes. That is so powerful. So even if you don't remember, I'm glad you brought that up. Even if you don't remember your dreams, um, but this seems interesting to you, come and borrow someone else's dream. Yeah. Um, because we are not only dreaming for ourselves, we're dreaming for the collective as well. Yeah. And um, I'm for one, you all can take my poop dream and you can have at it. I give you full permission. <laughs> I mean, there is so much more than poop in that dream. Yes, there was, totally. There was, you had a cock in that dream. I did there have was... a cock in that dream. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much there. <laughs> um, which I think was the first time I've ever had a cock in a dream. Um, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, the point being, even if you don't remember your dreams, um, or, your your cox. or your cocks, um, or your money, um, and your and it seems intriguing to you, um, come to the dream circle because whether you share a dream or you don't share a dream or whether you have a dream to share, or you remember your dreams or any of that, I promise you, in doing this, just like watching tonight. I promise you in doing this work in a, in a circle together and community together, which is what we've been talking about with the prompts, right? It's this community experiential, that's where the healing is. That's where the transformation is. That's where the shifts happen with this stuff. It's not in the, as Reading awesome the as the posts are that we yeah. post, it's not yeah. in that. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit. We've got uh, for the next three Mondays, we have events every Monday leading up to the official launch of Lust. We have six people in Lust. We're taking 13. So um, yeah, come and try these events so that we you can claim your space in the container, the 16 week container. The first yeah. event is on the 10th. Yep. And it is uh, a breath ritual. So I'll be leading us through a breath ritual using um, a guided journey, meditation, music, and we'll go through that together and then have a little bit of time for community digestion after. And then Julie is going to lead us through on the 17th. Mm -hmm. for the uh, last... we're gonna, yep. We're going to be... Um... 
working with lust within like look we're all going to put our lust lenses on and share dreams so again like if you have a dream if you think to yourself well i haven't had a lusty dream just bring a dream and you'll be amazed at how just looking with these lenses will be able to find where lust is showing up in your dreams and it's it's desire i mean it's it, it's an, I've done I've done this with desire. I've not done this with lust. They're very connected for me, um, and I did this with desire. And I was amazed at the places where we found the desire. Yeah. And there was one dream where it was located within disgust. Yep. Yeah. And then on the twenty fourth, yep. it'll be the last of the three pack taster event where we're going to do an embodied play session like we have in the past with villain. So we'll have some games. We'll, we'll embody our lust. I'm sure there will be some animal play and um, sounding, and we're going to co-host that one together. So there's lots of opportunities for you to come and play with your lust or dream with your lust or breathe with your lust. And um, yeah, so they're $33 a piece. Or you can buy a like pass and get all three for 66. And before we wrap up, I want to just, first of all, that's an amazing, that's amazing. Um, before we wrap up though, I do want to just mention that uh, Daniela kind of, kind of touched on this, their taster events. What that means is like, this is what's in lust. Not all of it, of course, it's a taster, but the, these are the practices that we're going to be doing in lust. So if you have just heard of this group program called Lust and you want to check it out, if you've been on the fence, if you've... If you didn't get a chance to come to some of the villain activities, um, this is a great time to just be in, in community with Julie and I, feel how we hold space, come and have fun. If you and, have no intention in being in Lust, but you just yeah, want to... Just yeah. Just come too, and like we really want to make this work accessible for people. It's very important to both of us. You know, I I want to start a movement of channel of eminence and embracing things like the frequency of lust in our bodies, and you know, removing these conditionings and programmings and viruses we have around the power of our own body, and and why we feel disgusted by our animal nature. Like I, I want to, that's my calling. That's my Dharma. That's my work in the world. And so we're just here to like have some fun and hold some containers, you know, and like change the way we think, feel and act with our less. No big deal. NBD. NBD. <laughs> All right. Drop any questions that you have or comments. Yeah in the comments section please if you're watching the replay let us know you're watching the replay we'd love to know what your takeaways are what's coming up for you what dreams you've had um if you want to post a dream we're both happy i think to you know yeah. do a little bit of eyes on and see see what's going on there um if someone does post their dream i just want to like heads up like we work with dreams by saying if this were my dream we don't tell anybody what their dream is that's super important to me so i just wanted to mention that um, I think that's it. Are we good? I think we're good. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank um, you. That was fun, Julie. Yeah, totally fun. Thank yeah. you for doing that. I'm going to go play yeah. with my fox. <laughs> I'm going to go drop my baby fox off in baby fox daycare. <laughs> yeah. Let her go play and color and have fun. And then yeah. you can use that tail and that orange all you want, girl. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yes. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody.